Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about NP-completeness. Now this is the first of multiple videos in this series, so if you want to know more about NP-completeness, I recommend that you check out the later videos in this particular playlist. In this particular video, we're going to just give you a high-level overview of NP-completeness. Now most of the algorithms that we have studied so far, and if you want to look at the different algorithms that we have studied, please go to the play playlist, you'll find a list of the different algorithms that we have studied. Now, all these algorithms that we've studied, they are all polynomial time algorithms. Now, what is a polynomial time algorithm? It means that the worst case running time of the algorithm is polynomial. That is, you can express it as O n to the power of k, where k is some constant. It could be like k could be 2, 3, 4, 100 if you want it to be, but it is still polynomial. A O of n to the power of 100 is an algorithm which is very inefficient, but still it is a polynomial time algorithm. So there are some other problems that cannot be solved in polynomial time. That is O of n to the power of k. So it cannot be solved in polynomial time. Now these are the kind of problems that we're going to look at in this video and in the later videos in this playlist. Now these problems, loosely speaking, are called NP-complete problems. Now we will get into details of NP-complete problems, but if you want to have a high level idea of what is NP-completeness, you should think of it this way. If, even if you have all the computing power in the world, there are instances of this problem that will not finish in finite time. So the problems are so hard that there is it takes so much computational power and still you will not actually arrive at the solution. So there are instances. It does not mean that all instances of a problem are so difficult to solve. It just means that for NP-complete problems, the worst case is very, very bad. It's not polynomial. So we're going to talk about such problems. Now, you might think that these problems will have a different kind of nature, but that's actually not the case. They look very similar to problems that can be solved in polynomial time. So here is one example. Shortest path algorithm. We have studied one such algorithm, which is Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. It's a polynomial time algorithm. You can find the shortest path from a node to all other nodes or from a vertex to all other vertices in the graph in polynomial time. In comparison, if you want to find the longest simple path in a graph. Okay. So instead of the shortest, you're trying to find the longest simple path in a, uh, in a graph. This particular problem is NP-complete. So these two problems, though similar, are very different in their complexity. Let's look at another problem. So in the previous video in this playlist, we talked about CNF satisfiability. Now, two CNF sat uh, is polynomially solvable. In comparison, 3 CNF sat, which is very similar to 2 CNF sat, it's NP complete. And all, if you have 4 CNF sat, 5 CNF sat, they're all NP complete as well. So T, 2 CNF sat is, is easy to solve. By easy to solve, I mean there is, exists a polynomial time solution. 3 CNF sat is difficult to solve. That means the amount of time that you could, would take to solve this problem is not polynomial. Okay, so that's an NP complete problem. Now, we talked about uh, NP completeness, gives you an idea of what kind of problems we have, we're going to discuss here. So, the first thing is to understand the difference between P and NP. Now, there we are going to talk about three different classes here. So, three different classes of problems P versus NP versus NP complete. Now, what is P? So this is, P is not a particular problem, it's a class of problems. Now, P is that class of problems which are solvable in polynomial time. So you can solve all problems in this class in polynomial time. That is, the problems in this class can be solved as n log n. For example, if you are thinking about merge sort, that can be solved in O of n log n or theta of n log n. We're talking about insertion sort, okay. its worst case running time is theta of n square. So that is a polynomial time algorithm. Okay, So all, different, all these problems will fall into P. Now, what is the class NP? 
it consists of those kind of, those problems that are verifiable in polynomial time now what do we mean by verifiable what it means is if you're given a certificate of the solution that is you're given so that somebody comes and tells you that this is the solution to this problem and what you have to do is you have to verify if whatever they told you is actually the solution or not or not so that is what you're trying to do you're not trying to find the solution here but if somebody presents a certificate and tells that that is the solution to this problem you can verify if their solution is correct or not okay so let's understand this concept with 3 cnf sat so in 3 cnf sat there are clauses which are anded together okay that's what cnf is and because it is 3 cnf each clause has three literals and if you don't uh, know 3 cnf sat I recommend that to you watch the earlier video in this playlist so phi is this boolean formula in 3 cnf form now 3 cnf sat is we have to find out an assignment to the variables such that phi evaluates to true now phi will only evaluate to true if each and every clause evaluates to true because they are anded together here so they are all anded together here so each and every clause has to evaluate to true for phi to evaluate to true, okay? So let's look at a certificate for this particular problem. Certificate is an assignment of variables. So one assignment is x1 equal to one, x2 equal to one, x3 equals zero, x4 equals zero, and x5 equals zero. So we have five variables in this case, and these are the assignments that we have done. So that's a certificate. And assume that somebody presents the certificate to you. Now, can you verify if this is actually yields a solution to phi? It is satisfies phi? That's possible. You just put in all these values, evaluate each class, see if each class evaluates to one, and then you can prove that the certificate actually is the correct certificate, is a solution to phi. So verifying the solution takes polynomial time because you just have to verify each clause. You just have to plug in those values and that's it. It will be very easy to verify in polynomial time. So this particular, so 3CNF, what we've shown is 3CNF sat is actually in the class NP because once somebody gives you the solution, you can ver verify that the solution is correct in polynomial time. Okay, so what have we talked about so far? We have talked about P, which is all problems that can be solved in polynomial time. And NP is that sort of problems whose certificate can be verified in polynomial time. So this begs us the, the question, what is the relationship between P and NP? Now, any problem in P is also in NP. Because if a problem can be solved in polynomial time, its certificate can easily be verified in polynomial time. The thing is, you can if somebody gives you the problem, you can find a solution to it itself in polynomial time. Therefore, if somebody gives you the solution, definitely you can check if the solution is correct in polynomial time. So P is definitely a subset of NP. Now, the only question that has still not been solved is whether P is equal to NP or P is not equal to NP. So P equal to N NP or P not equal to NP. This is a question that has still not been answered, whether these are two distinct classes, but computer scientists believe that in general, P should be not equal to NP. These should be two different sets of classes, but this has not been proved yet. So we will assume that that has not been proved, but we will. But as we discuss more in this video and in the next video, it will be clear to you that most likely it is the case that P and NP are not the same class. Now, we talked about P, we talked about NP. The next class is NP complete. Now, a problem is in this class NPC or NP complete if first it is in NP. 
So prob if a problem has to be NP-complete, it has to be first in this NP class. Now, what it also it uh, we have to show is it is as hard as any other problem in NP. So there are a whole bunch of different problems in NP and just trust my word on this for now that there are a bunch of problems in NP. And if you show that a problem is NP complete, what we are essentially showing is that it is an NP and this problem is as hard as all the other problems that are there in this NP class. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if one NP complete problem gets solved, all other NP complete problems will also get solved. And why is this? What we are showing is, if a problem is NP complete, what we are showing is this problem is as hard as any other problem in NP. Therefore, if somehow you can solve this problem, this problem that you're interested in, all the other problems should also get solved because this is as hard as all of them. So they are all equivalent in terms of their hardness. Now, so that is what is the main concept of, of NP completeness. Now, what, as I mentioned, we believe that P and NP are not the same class, so they are different. So if you want to just define NP completeness, just think of it this way, that they are the class of problems that cannot be solved in polynomial time. Usually they have if you, you can come up with algorithms to solve these problems, usually they will have complexity like exponential. So that is what you have to think of NP-complete problems, that these problems cannot be solved in polynomial time. So if you want to pictorially represent these three classes, what we have is we have the P class here. I just, and there is in the NP class is going to be at least as big as the P class. We assume that it's bigger, okay? Because P is a subset of NP. Whether P and NP are the same class, nobody knows, but the general belief is that NP is bigger than P. And NPC are the hardest problems in NP. So hardest problem, that's how you should think of it. So they are the hardest problems that lie in this NP class. Now, whether there is this space in between the two classes, whether this space actually exists, nobody knows because that has still not been proved. But NP complete problems are problems which have cannot be solved in polynomial time. So what we'll see is that there are a whole bunch of problems which lie in this NP complete class. Okay, Till date, more than a million problems have been shown to lie in this class. So it's think of NP complete problems as a bucket. So we have this bucket of NPC and people keep adding problems into it. So people keep showing that problems are NP complete. And we will see how we can show that a problem is NP complete. So there are the whole bunch of problems that keep getting added here. And they are closely interlinked just by the definition of NP complete that it is as hard as any other problem. So somehow, so these are like whole bunch of different problems. So I'm just going to write, so this is problem one, problem two, problem three, problem four, and problem five. So there are, so somehow if somebody finds a polynomial time solution to one of these problems, what it just means is all these problems which get solved in polynomial time. So if, if someone finds poly time solution, To say P4. If someone finds a problem, then all problems, problems in NP in NPC will get solved in, in polynomial time. That's what will happen. Now, because there are millions of problems in it, we just believe that. If, and lots of smart people have worked on this, we just believe that these problems cannot be solved in polynomial time. But nobody has proved that, okay? So just to recap, this is a difficult concept. So I'll just quickly recap what we studied. So what we studied is, we looked at problems that could, don't run in polynomial time. 
Okay, that's what we looked at here. So we looked at problems that are, are don't have polynomial time algorithms. So we will, we are going to study those classes of problems, and we looked at p versus n p versus n p complete. So p is that class of problems that is solvable in polynomial time. n p is the those set of problems that are verifiable in polynomial time. By that I mean if someone gives you a certificate. And then what you can do is you can verify that the certificate is actually a solution of this problem in polynomial time. So it is easy to understand that P is a subset of NP because if you can solve a problem in polynomial time, of course, you can verify its solution in polynomial time as well. Okay, so that is definitely true. Whether P is equal to NP or P is not equal to NP, that has still not been proved, though it's widely believed that P is not equal to NP. So finally, we talked about NP completeness. So NP completeness refers to those set of problems which are in NP, but are as hard as any other problem in NP. So they're the kind of the hardest problems in this NP class. And because they're as hard as one another, if one NP complete problem gets solved, all NP complete problems will get solved. So basically, this is the picture that we'll, uh, we should remember that there is this P class, there is an NP class, and there is an NPC class, okay? That is, they are all different. So in this particular video, I just introduced the basic concept of NP completeness. Hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we'll get into more details. Thank you for watching.